Hey, my name is Christian and I'm a structural engineer at FastenUp who specializes in mass timber structures. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about point supported CLT. In this video, I want to give an overview of what point supported CLT is, some of the key design considerations, and then finally some of the work FastenUp is doing with point supported CLT. Point supported CLT is a building system where CLT panels are supported directly on columns with no beams. Because the system is beamless, there are a number of advantages to using it. One of them being construction is greatly simplified and generally sped up quite a bit. Uh, the other is that mechanical and electrical distribution systems are simplified. Due to its advantages, we're seeing point-supported CLT gain popularity as a building system. At Fast and Up, we're using it in a variety of locations, but particularly our tall timber towers. So a typical point-supported CLT building consists of CLT panels supported directly on columns. These columns will commonly be glue-laminated timber or steel, but a variety of materials can be used. So there's only one significant connection in a point-supported CLT gravity system. This is the column to panel connection. So it really consists of just four elements, the CLT panel, the column, a bearing plate, and a column to column connection. The bearing plate is used to take forces from the CLT panel and transfer them to the column below, whereas the column to column connection is used to transfer forces from the top column to the bottom column. This is because there's a, normally a large amount of force going through each column, and this would crush the CLT panel if it just landed straight on it. Design considerations for using point support as CLT. One of them is that because the system doesn't have any beams, you're gonna end up with a much lower clear span between columns, so the column grid is a lot more tightly packed. Um, another one is that because of this unique loading situation, uh, most CLT panels are supported in a line, whereas in points for CLT, all the force is going directly to the columns. And this is a more complicated loading scenario that is difficult to analyze. Um, another challenge is that currently in the building code, the loading or the material capacity used doesn't account for the special condition. This can lead to conservative design assumptions. So probably the most famous building that FastNet has worked on that's point supported CLT is the Brock Commons Tallwood House. This was the tallest timber building in the world at the time it was built and featured point supported CLT with a concrete core. In order to build the Brock Commons building, there was a significant amount of testing that was done on point supported panels and, and this research really supported uh, the design that was done. Currently, FastNEP is innovating on the Brock Commons design. A good example of this is the new uh, BCIT student residence. So this is the 12 story uh, point supported CLT tower and instead of using glue lamp columns, it uses steel columns. Uh, the advantage being that the steel columns are quite slender and can fit between demising walls. BCIT also uses a panel that is 20% wider than what was used at Brock Commons, allowing us to have uh, more space between the columns. FastenUp is looking to continue the innovation that's happening in the realm of point supported CLT. Uh, one of the big ways we're going to be doing this is with a big NRCAN funded research program. This is going to take place in our new concept lab and we're going to be testing a large number of CLT panels. The goal of this is going to be to understand the strength of the system in this point-supported point condition a little bit better. Results will be made publicly available from this study, and the goal is for this to be a big step towards getting the specific strength of point-supported CLT in this condition into the building code. So that's point-supported CLT. Thanks for watching.